together. Sunday, and I can imagine the people in Israel singing something just like this as Jesus enters into Jerusalem. And they were so excited because he was coming to overthrow their oppressors and do the thing that they saw, but they underestimated what he was getting ready to do. They saw something right here in the physical, and Jesus came to do something far greater that Friday. He came to overthrow death, hell, the grave, get rid of our sin once and for all. They thought he was coming to conquer the people of this world, but he came to do something far, far greater. But here's what I know. There may be things going on in your life and you're maybe, maybe you're similar to those people. You're hoping that he can, but you just don't know if he's, can he fix this? Is he able to do what I need him to do? Is he able to fix my situation, get me out of this, to heal my body? Is he able to take care of my problems at work? Is he able to solve the issues I have going on in my family? And we may underestimate the, the abilities of our God in our situation. And man, as we close this moment, man, I wanna pray because the Jesus that entered into Jerusalem is the same Jesus in our life. Man, he came back to life. And he can change whatever you're facing right now. And so I don't know what weights you're carrying. I don't know what burdens you have, what's, what's going on in your world. But and I know Jesus can do way greater things than I can even picture. So let's pray. Man, let's pray that God does something big in our lives, in our world this week. This is a big week. And I believe there's great things in store. God, we are grateful. Grateful to you that you'd sent your son. You sent Jesus to pay the ultimate price. Jesus, thank you for being willing to come to this earth, to live as a human, to experience all of humanity, and to do that which we could never do on our own. Pay the ultimate price for our sin with your very life. To conquer things that we can't even see, we can't even comprehend. Death, hell, and the grave are no issue for you because you have all power and authority. So God, whatever people may be carrying today, whatever they may be walking through in their life, I know that you have the authority, the power, the ability to intervene, to change, to bring freedom, to bring hope. So God, we invite you into our story. <laughs> Rather, Jesus, let us get involved in your story. Jesus, you've been working even from 2,000 years ago on what we are going through today. So God, we just simply submit ourselves to what you're doing. Those people in Jerusalem didn't know exactly what you were getting ready to do on Palm Sunday long, long ago. God, we may not know exactly what you're getting ready to do this week, but God, we are excited. We know that you have sent the answer to us. He is your son. His name is Jesus. And so we simply honor you we give you great, all of our praise and honor today because of all the great things that you've done for us. We thank you for who you are, what you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen. Give the Lord a round of applause. And God is good. Hey, thank you for joining us today. You can be seated for just a few moments. We're going to continue our worshiping through our giving. Giving is a part of our DNA at our church. 
Man, we believe in sowing seed into what God is doing in and around the world. We believe that there are people who need to meet Jesus. We may never get to meet, but there are missionaries and missions organizations doing just that around the world. And we support them through what we call Bridge Builders. All of our offerings today that come in above the tithe are going to be going to Bridge Builders. Now, two weeks ago, we had our Bridge Builders celebration, a huge fundraising event that we have once a year where we raise money for all the incredible things that are happening around the world. And this year, we raised a record amount of money. Ladies and gentlemen, we raised over $201,000 in one night. God is good. And here's what's so awesome. We raise all of that money because, man, we do, we have a whole missions team who divvies up that money, gives it to the people who need it the most, but we don't just bring that money in. We immediately begin sending it back out. The second you give, it's already been spoken for. We have projects around the globe that we are supporting, and today we want to celebrate and give some of that money that we received a couple weeks ago. We want to begin giving away what you gave. We believe there are people who need it, and today we want to give to Green Country Adult and Teen Challenge. I want to invite the executive director, Ms. Stephanie Faulkner up here with us. Because of your gifts, we want to bless Adult and Teen Challenge today with a check for $20,000. $20,000. If you're not here with us in person, you may not have had a chance to meet the incredible ladies that are a part of our Adult and Teen Challenge that are here with us each and every day. You maybe hear them right now. We love having Adult and Teen Challenge with us. I mean, they are changing lives. They are pulling people out of addictions. They are giving people hope. They are restoring families. They are giving people a future when the enemy has tried to take it away. And we are so excited to sow into what God is getting ready to do. We know that this is only the beginning. When you give, it's not just coming in here to pat our pockets. No way. We are giving that money straight back out to the people who need it, to the lives that need to be changed around the globe. So if you want to give today, we want to make it easy for you. If you have a check, you can drop it in the offering buckets on your way out, or you can go to our website at any time, any time uh, woodlake.church, and you can give there. But I want to pray for what God is getting ready to do, for your gifts today, but also for what God is getting ready to do through Adult and Teen Challenge. If you have a physical offering, I want to ask you to hold it out in front of you. We want to pray for it and pray for Stephanie and her team. Jesus, we just come before you. And God, we just simply ask you to bless that which you've already begun. God, there are lives that are being changed right now in green country because of programs just like Adult and Teen Challenge. Because of people like Stephanie, God, who are investing in people who the world may say are lost causes, but God, you have not given up on yet. God, there are lives that are going to be changed. There are families that are going to be restored. There are going to be marriages that are put back together because of the freedom that is found through Adult and Teen Challenge. And so, God, we are excited to sow seed into what you are doing. And, God, we also want to bless each and every offering that is given today. Each and every gift that comes in, we believe that you have a plan and a purpose for. You can use our gifts in a greater way than we could have ever used them on our own. So, God, we give with an excited heart today because we know that lives are getting ready to be changed. God, thank you for giving us this opportunity. We pray your blessing and your favor over Adult and Teen Challenge, over Steph and your team. And God, we pray your blessing over every gift that's given today. We give it all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen. Give Stephanie another round of applause. We're so excited. We get an opportunity to give. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a generous church. Man, we are grateful to you. Hey, if you have your phone with you, you can open it up and go to the YouVersion Bible app. We have some notes we'd love for you to follow along, be able to take them home with you later on today. Go to the events page. You'll see Woodlake Church in there. Uh, for the next 10 seconds, here's what I want to give you an opportunity to do. We believe in finding family, and if we don't give you a chance to do that, we have failed. So we want to give you a chance to make some friends. Everybody stand up with me. High five somebody around you. Introduce yourself to somebody whose face you don't quite know. Give them an elbow bump. Just greet one another today.
Hello, I'm Wyatt. We are the Austins, and we are so glad you have joined us today. Immediately following this service, we'll be in the Connection Corner, and we would love to meet you. Now open your Bibles and get ready for a great message. Nothing says I love you like a little bit of fatherly violence. No. Hey, so glad you're with us here today at Woodlake. And uh, my name is Jamie, and you saw my family right there. If you're new with us, we're going to be on the front doors right after this service. We'd love a chance just to welcome you here if you're brand new. So Woodlakers, give all of our guests a huge round of applause. So glad that, that you're with us today. If you're watching online. Hey, I want to start the service this morning. I want to pray. Uh, one, of, one of our Woodlake family members, uh, Dr. Gary Lee, is in the hospital right now and just needs a miraculous touch in his body. And uh, I, I want to pray for, for the Lee family here today. Scripture says it. The Lord says this of himself. He says, I am the God who heals you. We, 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 uh, we looked at this over the last few weeks. Jehovah Rapha, he's the God who heals. He's the God who restores, the God who repairs. And so this morning, would you join with me as we pray for Dr. Lee? Let's believe for an undeniable move of God's healing touch today. Can we do that? Join with me. Father, Lord, thank you. Your word, uh, Lord, you have named yourself the God who heals. So, Lord, we lay hold of what you said in your word. Psalm 103, even David declared it. You sent your word. Not only did you forgive all of our sin, but you healed all of our diseases. And, Lord, this morning we ask for an undeniable move of you in the life of Gary Lee. Lord, I pray for doctors and nurses and specialists. Lord, your word says if anyone lacks wisdom, all we have to do is ask, and you'll give it liberally. So, Lord, we pray for your wisdom, your insight, but more than anything, we pray for a healing touch from you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. Woodlake family, I want to remind you, every one of our services, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, uh, we have a chance to pray. And this is a church that's going to take God at his word. Amen? So take advantage of those opportunities to pray because I, I just believe God wants to work miracles. Amen? Luke chapter 22. This is Palm Sunday. Next Sunday is Easter. Are you excited? So Woodlake family, I want to remind you that next Sunday it's going to be a little crowded around here. That's a good problem. Okay? There are going to be people that are going to come to church, and not just Woodlake, but, but churches all across Tulsa, and they haven't been in a long time. And I am so thankful that they're going to be here because they're going to hear the message of Jesus Christ. Would you join with me this week in praying? In fact, you see on your, your, your seats the one, one purpose, all right? Three services. We're going to be praying for three people, one purpose, and that's that people come to know Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Savior. Do you believe that he still sets the captive free? Be in prayer with us. This coming Wednesday night, is our prayer service, a joint prayer service right here in this room starting at 6.30. Dinner at 5.30, then prayer and communion at 6.30. And we are going to intercede and believe for people to be saved. Not just in this church, but in churches all across Tulsa as people come in. You may be sitting there going to say, well, well, Pastor, how can I help? Number one, get involved. For some of you, this is going to be the first time to get involved, whether it's greeting or serving in kids' ministry or, or serving in kids' ministry or... Or serving in kids' ministry. There you go. All right. Uh, for some of you, you said, Pastor, I, I've been on a break. Well, listen, 10 years is too long for a break of serving in church, okay? No, here's what I'm trying to say. We need your help next week. You, you can volunteer. Secondly, you can slide to the 815 or the 11 o'clock service and make room at that middle service uh, for people to, to bring guests and that sort of thing. Is that cool? Appreciate your help right here. Luke chapter 22. Palm Sunday, as we come into the Easter, you see right in front of me a, a communion table. If you grew up in church, you probably saw something like this at the front of the auditorium. It, it, a lot of times they have a, 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 an inscription on it. Really, it's scripture. Do this in remembrance of of me. What, what, what is this table representing? Well, well it's communion. Now, if, as you walked in, you got communion elements. And if you didn't get them when you came in, we'll have the ushers here in just a moment bring them, bring them to you. Why do we celebrate communion? Well, one, Jesus instituted this practice in the church to reflect on what he accomplished for each and every one of us on the cross, right? 
Uh, and so, so here in just a little bit, we are going to do what Scripture tells us to continue to do. As long as we, if we take the cup and eat the bread, we, we remember the Lord and what he did for us. You say, why, why is that important? Because I, sometimes when we take communion, sometimes when we just come to church, we do it on cruise control. How many of you have been there before? And I want to remind this church family that coming to church, taking communion, worship, diving into the word of God, it's not a passive activity. That God has a purpose, has a purpose in it. So why do we celebrate communion in church? Well, well, they did it here in Luke chapter 22. They were commemorating the Passover. If you're familiar with this passage of Scripture, Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. You remember as we, as we preached just a, just a week ago on the triumphal entry, him riding in on the, the foal of a donkey, and they were waving palm branches, crying, Hosanna, Lord. And Jesus had made preparation to share the Passover meal with his disciples, but they had no idea what they were going to expect in that upper room. Scripture said this, Luke twenty two fifteen. 15. He said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Verse 19 and he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Or one version might say broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20, he goes on to say, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup in the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ? Now, if you're new to church... And you say, there's an awful lot of talk about blood. <laughs> and, and for some, that might seem a little foreign, especially when we talk about the cross. In fact, next week, as, as we celebrate Easter, we don't just celebrate the crucifixion, this bloody scene of capital punishment. What we celebrate is the resurrection, amen? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in each and every one of us. But this moment, this this. This communion, this Passover is, is huge. The Passover was commemorated to celebrate the Exodus hundreds of years before. When God would ultimately set his people free from captivity. If you're familiar with the story, they spent 400 years as slaves in, in Egypt. But there was this, this move of God where he was going to set his people free. Many of you are familiar with this. There was the, the, the death angel and, and how if the blood of the lamb was applied to the doorpost of their home, the death angel passed over. Are you, are you with me here today? And thus began the exodus where they exited slavery. Ultimately, what Jesus was going to say, he said, hey, here's, here's new blood, here's a new covenant, and what Jesus would accomplish for every one of us on the cross was a better exodus. Come on, somebody. Do you remember when you exited your life of sin? In fact, Jesus described it this way in John chapter 4. He says, very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who has sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but listen to this, but has crossed over from death unto life. As they were celebrating the exodus, Jesus is saying, hey, I'm getting ready in my blood to accomplish another exodus. You're going to cross over from your life of sin and bondage. How many of you know that sin is bondage? You're, I'm getting ready to, to, to allow you in my blood to cross over from sin into life. Then he says this. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, in Scripture, both the Old and the New Testament, forgetting was a sign of falling away. Are you with me? 
And so you see that over and over in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that uh, forgetting, you, you have forgotten in the Psalms, you, you see, you have, you have forgotten. In fact, in Revelation, the indictment of the church of Ephesus was this, you have forgotten your first love. I think it's important for the modern church to come together and celebrate communion as Scripture has said we should. Why? So that we stop forgetting what Jesus Christ has done. Can I have an amen? We need to remember. One commentator said it this way. Every time Jesus is misrepresented, we have forgotten. Every time we rebel against the one who bought us, we have forgotten. Every time we look to ourselves instead of Jesus himself, we have forgotten. In fact, I'm going to say this. I believe the modern church has forgotten what this thing is all about. So this morning, I, I want to preach the Passover. I want to preach communion. For some of you, you, you grew up in church, and, and you, you have taken communion. Some of you went to a church where they discipled you, or maybe if you grew up in, in, um, in, 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 in churches that were a little more formal, you know, communion was a big deal. But I believe much of the modern church, they take communion on cruise control, and that's dangerous. So this morning, if you're taking notes, in fact, you got your notes right there, I want you to write these things down, okay? Why do we take communion? Why do we remember this moment? Number one is this, because he eagerly desires this moment with us. Scripture says it, Jesus said it, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. The King James Version says it this way, with desire... I have desired. Think about it for just a moment. What Jesus is getting across here, especially in the original language, is this intense desire to spend this moment with his disciples. Ultimately, what Jesus is saying is to his disciples, he says, listen, all of my life, all of my ministry has come down to this one moment. He was talking about the blood. He was talking about his body that ultimately Jesus was saying, I'm doing this not just to make you religious, not just to make you moral, but to save you. I expected a louder amen right there. Amen. Let me unpack that for just, uh, for just a moment. Jesus was ultimately saying here as we commemorate the Passover, we're, I'm, I'm showing you a, a better covenant. We're going to break that down in just a moment. But ultimately, I am going to set you free with the, my blood, is what he's saying. Uh, you've heard me say this many times here, and, and I don't know who I'm quoting, but, but I love this phrase, that Jesus uh, died on the cross for this reason. If we were, we're not mistakers in need of correction, we are sinners in need of a Savior. And Jesus is saying, I desire with desire to spend this moment with you. Don't put it on cruise control. In my blood, there's going to be a new covenant. In my blood, there's going to be a better exodus. In my blood is the only way, Jesus said, you're going to go free. David Goodzik, he said it this way, this is not the beginning of the end. It's the beginning of the beginning. He says, I've eagerly desired. Woodlake family, I, I, I'm so thankful that our church is growing. We are in three services now. In fact, this morning, our Turley location, it's the grand opening of their brand new building. Isn't that exciting? Glenpool location is... You, know, you say, why are you talking about this here today? Uh, none of that matters unless people are being saved. Woodlake family, I'm going to talk to you as your pastor here for just a moment. May we never forget why we do what we do. We have to be careful. The longer we are in church, the easier it is to forget why we do what we do. Jesus was saying, with this cup, with this bread, this is my single purpose, that people are saved and set free. It's all about Jesus and people knowing him. So Woodlake family, if ever you sit here and you start to get irritated with things, irritation is a part of life. We were, listen, I'm, I'm going to level with you. Some of you are wondering why we slid the services times like we did. Because at our main service time, that middle service, uh, for months, 
it would come down to maybe only a handful or a couple handful of parking spaces open. I'm talking like 10 or 12 on the entire parking lot. You say, that's 10 or 12. That's with 60 plus cars parked on the grass. And when we slid service times, I know that rocked some of our theology. How can we have church 30 minutes earlier? <laughs> Let me tell you why we did it. Because we wanted to make room for people who don't know Jesus Christ. And it's not about me. Come on, somebody. And it's not about you. Woodlake family, may we never forget it's about people being saved. Well, pastor, the church is getting too big. Listen to me. How big is too big? When do we close the doors of the ark? When your family gets on? Or when my family gets on? We must be about people getting saved. What does that mean? That means here at church, you're going to run into people who are not all the way sanctified. I got news for you. Neither are you. And neither am I. That's why we need the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's never forget. Let's never forget. Um, I've, I've hit the age that you ever like realize I, I'm turning into my parents. Yes. You ever been there? This actually happened to me. This actually happened to me the, the other day. I walked into the kitchen, opened up the fridge, and the only way I know to describe it is I was just, your computer ever just buffer? Yeah. And finally Jen goes, what are you doing in there? I go, I can't remember. <laughs> Are you hungry? I'm like, I, I, I can't remember. <laughs> then it hit me. <laughs> it's happening. Now, what am I trying to say? Uh, I couldn't remember why I even went into the kitchen to begin with. Folks, may we never forget why we come to church. Amen. May we never forget what this is all about. And maybe if you're struggling with church here today, and I'm not just talking about Woodlake. Maybe you're guests with us today. Maybe you're watching online and you're checking churches out and you're ready to click to the next service. Listen. It's easy to forget. Because the longer we're in church, the more we want it to be about us. The problem is it's never about us. The moment we say yes to Jesus Christ, it ceases to be about us. That's why the logo of Christianity is a cross, not a couch. I'm preaching to somebody today. Let's keep moving. He eagerly desires this moment with us. Here's the second thing. What, what he's trying to say, he says, he offers a better way. Would you agree that this Jesus thing is a better way? Have you ever wrestled with guilt and shame and tried to be good? That's like impossible. Right? You, ever like, you ever like, man, there's sometimes in the morning, I'm just, I'm like, God, I need your power and strength today, Lord. I'm going to live for you today. The Holy Spirit set a guard over my mouth. Holy Spirit set a guard over my mouth. Holy Spirit set a guard over my mouth. Some of you know what I'm talking about, right? Lord, be Lord of my thoughts this morning. Lord, I need you today, and I have all these great plans, and then my feet hit the floor. And boy, my plans fall apart. Anybody else? If you've ever tried to be good, let me just say this. You will wear yourself out trying to be good. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant. Make a note of that. In my blood, which is poured out for you. New covenant. They would have immediately begun to connect the dots with the old sacrificial system. That there was this day of atonement. And the blood of animals had to be shed. That word atonement in the original language means to cover. Make a note of that. So there was this annual remembrance of failure. Your sins could be covered, but you had to reflect and remember. Now, thank God they could be covered. But it's the remembering that becomes the problem. Would you agree? You ever think about what you used to be and you just shake your head? All the time. Yeah, me too. 
You ever, you ever just remember some of your past failures and just think, dear God. <laughs> Hebrews 6, the writer of Hebrews kind of repeats what Jesus says, but he said this, that Jesus is the mediator, listen to this, not just of a new covenant, but, but this, King James says it this way, a better covenant. Chapter 10 of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, again, referring to the old sacrificial system, he says, but those sacrifices were an annual reminder of sins. He goes on to say, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin." Verse 11, Hebrews 10 says, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Listen to this. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, listen to this, which can never take away sins. Under the old sacrificial system, the atonement, the sins were covered by the blood but they had to be remembered. They were never taken away. But listen to verse 12. But when this priest, he's talking about Jesus, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Listen to this, verse 14. For by one sacrifice, he made perfect forever those who are being made holy. A better covenant, a better way, Again, referring to the old sacrificial system, the day of atonement, the blood of animals could simply only cover up sin. But it was an annual remembrance. Why? Because the sins were covered but never taken away. Oh, but the shed blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus, is a better covenant. Can I have an amen? Our sins were not simply atoned for. They were not simply covered. Folks, they were taken away. John the Baptist prophetically uttered it. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I want to I wanna encourage you, church family, here today. If you have said yes to the Lord, oh, we are under a better covenant. Amen. My sins are not simply covered. They are forever removed. You've heard me use this illustration before, but it's the difference between white out, some of you remember that, and a delete button. I'm thankful for the delete button. White out only covered up my many <laughs> grammatical errors. <laughs> I actually found one of my papers from my freshman year of college, it was, what's so funny, it's so old right now, I pulled it out of the file, and the amount of whiteout, anybody remember whiteout? Yeah. You used to paint over the mistakes, right? Of course, I've, it's been a couple years. Um, let me just say this, it's so old that the whiteout, actually it was dried, and was flaking off the paper, and I'm thinking, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> And as it was flaking off the paper, I could see the mistakes. I'm like, how, how did I ever pass a spelling test? <laughs> you know? But here's what's beautiful about it now. There's no such thing as that. I mean, there's, there's, there's no need for that anymore. We have a delete button that I could just go back and fix it. And folks, the shed blood of Jesus Christ doesn't merely cover over our mistakes and our sins and our failures. The shed blood of Jesus Christ forever takes it away. That's why the apostle Paul said it this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. In the original language, he, he meant a new creature altogether. Isn't that wonderful? Write this down. I, I didn't put it in your notes. But it is only in this better covenant that we can actually get past our past. I want to encourage you here today. Through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, if you, if you have something in your past that is just eating at you, if you have something in your past that just won't seem to go away, I want to remind you, if you've come to Jesus by faith, you are under a better covenant and you can get past your past. Why? Because you're a new creation. Here's, here's the last reason. His offer still stands. Now listen to me. 
but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. Have you ever found it interesting that Jesus, according to Luke's narrative, offered communion to Judas, who would ultimately betray him for 30 pieces of silver. It's interesting to me. It was a losing bet. Have you ever thought about that? Yet it was still extended to him. One commentator said it this way, that Jesus ultimately extended Judas an opportunity to repent. I've never thought about that before. It's because Jesus is faithful. And his offer of salvation is not predicated, listen to me, folks, on my behavior. His offer of salvation is predicated on my obedience in coming to him by faith. It was a losing bet. I don't know about you, but if I were Jesus sitting at the table, knowing Judas was going to do what he's going to do, listen, there'd have been all sorts of passive aggressive talk around the table. <laughs> you ever had those family dinners? And you're like, don't say it. And you always have that one relative that goes there. <laughs> How many of you are that relative? Don't raise your hand, okay? I would have been that person, right? Well, 11 of you are going to have fun in heaven. Here's what's interesting. No matter what gospel you read this story in, Jesus never outed him. He was trying to leave him intact, give him every chance to change. And we, we read it and go, what's the point? Several years ago, many of you know that my, my dad was a rancher. And several years ago um, there was a kind of a, a late season ice storm that, that came in and anybody that's ever worked with cattle especially uh, cows that are going to have calves you know that they always pick like the worst time to have a calf it's never like 75 degrees and sunny with no wind let's have a baby no Ice storms and plagues, let's have one down. <laughs> and it was an ice storm. And uh, one, of the, one of the mamas dropped a calf. And I remember heading up to the ranch one day, and I, and I was working with Dad. And he goes, wait, i got to go to the barn. He went to the barn, and he pulled back the, the barn doors and pile of hay right there, and there's this calf just covered in, don't say awe too much because that's not the real calf. <laughs> There's this calf and he's got blankets all over it in the hay. And we just pulled up in the truck and he had like hot water bottles that he was bringing and, and placing it around the calf. And I said, what happened? He said, well, this calf came in right in the middle of the ice and cold and it's not doing well. And here's my dad with this little calf. In fact, I went up to pet it. I'll never forget. And the body temperature of the calf was so low. I mean, you could tell. It was just barely breathing. Dad was wrapping it in blankets and putting those hot water bottles on it. Um, my dad was even force feeding it. And those of you that are familiar with livestock, you know, that's not like an easy thing to do. But here's the deal. That calf, 24 hours later, in fact, I, even, I remember looking at Dad going, Dad, this is pointless. This, this, this calf's not going to make it. And I, I watched my dad frantically treat this thing as if it was a, like, a, like, a, like a baby. I mean, he's doing everything he can. And he said this, as long as there's breath, 
I'm going to make the effort. Now, that calf ended up not surviving, and I knew it would. I mean, it wasn't like I, you, I wonder, it, 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 was, it, was a losing, it was a losing battle. You may sit here this morning and say, Pastor, what does that have to do with me? I want you to listen to me. Some of you this morning have considered yourself a losing bet. And you, are, and you are about to give up on yourself. I want to remind you, as long as there is breath in your lungs, your heavenly Father will do whatever it takes to get to you. Can I have an amen? If he, if he didn't give up on Judas, he's not going to give up on you. You tracking with me here today? Thank you, Jesus. You may be sitting out there today going, Pastor, in fact, I was talking to a I was actually with one of our, not, not Green Country Adult and Teen Challenge, but I was with another Teen Challenge recently, and I had, the, I had a student tell me one time, they said, you know, he says, it's like, I love it. He said, it was like God wouldn't quit dogging me. I find that interesting because one poet at the turn of the century, Francis Thompson, described the Lord this way, that he is the hound of heaven. He's the hound of heaven. You say, what does that have to do with me here today? If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with the Lord, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Lord just keeps hounding you. And he's doing everything he can to reach you. And he's got a better way, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you this morning, we're going to take communion as a church family as we close here today. I want you to get those communion elements in your hand. And listen, our ushers, if you'll go ahead and stand to your feet. If you, if you didn't get communion and you'd like to take communion with us, here today, raise your hand. We're, we're going to bring them to you. Now listen, here at Woodlake, we practice what we call open communion. You don't have to be a member of the church, but listen to me. Scripture is clear. You must be a member of the body of Christ. In fact, as they're handing this out, I want to read this to you. 1 Corinthians says this. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Paul goes on to say this, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink the cup. That word examine just simply means this, to, to see if, examine yourself to see if you are a genuine follower of Jesus. Verse 29, for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Now, simply this, if you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to say yes to the Lord for just a moment, but I'm going to ask the entire church family, would you just simply bow your heads and close your eyes with me today? And can we do just that? Can we... Can we examine ourselves as Paul says are we a genuine follower of the Lord but if you're here today and you'd say pastor I'm not maybe you're here today and you have just been doing this church thing on cruise control you've been doing this Jesus thing on cruise control and you'd say you know what I have never accepted by faith what Jesus accomplished for me on the cross and if that's you here today, I just simply want to invite you to say yes to Jesus. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord, you hear me say this every week, God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. The Word says that God loved us so much He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to pay our penalty on the cross for all of our sin and all of our mistake. Paul says it this way, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, that's me. I need to be saved today. I want you to do me a favor. On the count of three, I want you to hold a hand up. Hold it for just a moment. And when you do, we're all going to pray. Every one of us. But you'd say, Pastor, that's me. I'm saying yes to Jesus today. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yes to what he did for me, what he accomplished for me on the cross, that better covenant. If that's you on the count of three, Pastor, that's me. I'm saying yes to Jesus. Here we go. One, two, three. That's me. Would you hold that hand up? Thank you. Thank you. If you're watching online, you let us know right there. I'm saying yes to the Lord. Anybody else? You can put your hands down. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Woodlake family, I want everyone to pray this prayer with me. If you're new with this, we just simply call it the prayer of faith. I'm inviting you to pray with me here today and just uh, let me lead you in saying yes to the Lord. Can we do that? 
Everyone say it, dear Jesus. You are the Son of God. You died for me, for my sin, in my place. Come into my life. Forgive me and make me new. And from this day forward, with your help, I'm all yours. In your name I pray. Amen. If you said yes to the Lord here in just a moment, we're going to open the altars for prayer. It's imperative that you come tell somebody, I said yes to Jesus today. Because you just joined the family of God. Amen? Amen. Hey, would you take the elements and would you go ahead and open the bread first? Hold that in your hand. I love how the Apostle Paul said in Corinthians, he he simply said this, I receive from the Lord that which I pass on to you. He said, on the night that I was, or the, the, Jesus was betray, betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you hold the bread in your hand here today? Let me pray over it. Father, thank you for the body of Jesus, which was broken on the cross for us. The prophet Isaiah even said this, that in his body he bore, he carried our sin and our, and our sickness. And Lord, today, because of the broken body of Jesus, we don't have to carry those things anymore. So Lord, today we remember that your body was broken for us. And we receive all that it offers today in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you take the bread with me? If you're able to, would you stand to your feet this morning with the cup? Hold it out in front of you. The Apostle Paul said in like manner, he took the cup. And after he'd given thanks, he said, this cup represents the new covenant. The better covenant. The covenant that doesn't simply cover the covenant that takes away the covenant that lets me get past my past amen are you thankful for the blood of Jesus today let's let's pray father Lord today as Jesus did so many years ago we do this in remembrance not on cruise control we are so thankful for the shed blood of Jesus that today we can get past our past because of a, a better covenant, the Lamb of God whose blood takes away our sins. Lord, that today we don't have to remember, we don't have to reflect, but God, we are a new creation, not because we are good enough, but Lord, because by faith we came to Jesus. So Lord, today, thank you for the shed blood of Jesus. And Lord, maybe for some of us today is a fresh reminder of what this is all about. As David said it, Lord, in the scriptures, Lord, return to us the joy of our salvation. Lord, I pray for a fresh joy in this place today that we are saved and set free because of the cross of Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Would you take the cup? Amen. Pastor Brady. Church family, I'm going to invite our prayer team to come down front. If you said yes to Jesus, man, we want to celebrate what God has done, and we want to help you with the next steps. Come share with one of our prayer team members down here, and then we want to encourage you, get water baptized. Take the next step by going public with what Jesus has done in your life by getting baptized. We do that on the second Sunday of every month. But for the next few moments, we want to give you an opportunity an opportunity to respond to what God has been speaking to you today. Maybe you need help forgetting what God, or what has been going on in your life. Maybe forgetting all the things in your past. You want somebody to pray with you about what you're going through. We want to pray God's word over you, your family, and your situation. So if you want to, again, our worship team is going to finish the day out praying and worshiping here. We want to encourage you, come down here for prayer. If you uh, are not going to be coming down for prayer, we want to give you an opportunity to connect with one another. But we want to encourage you to take your conversations outside. There's going to be ministry taking place right now. Don't leave this place without responding to what God has done for you, what Jesus did on the cross for you. Come down right now. Let our prayer team pray with you. We hope you have a great afternoon.